Uh, you know, Bryce Harper isn't that great if you take away his 2015 season, is something an idiot would say. Yeah, and Neil Armstrong isn't that great of an astronaut if you take away the freaking moon landing. Bryce Harper was the most hyped draft prospect in MLB history. The fervor surrounding him was amplified in the internet age, with apocryphal stories of a freshman hitting a 570-foot homer lighting up sports headlines. He reclassified, playing juco ball in Nevada at the age of 17 in pursuit of becoming draft eligible as quickly as possible. He was selected first overall by the Washington Nationals in the 2010 draft, ushering a new era of hope for the franchise alongside Steven Strasburg. He won Rookie of the Year in 2012 at the age of 19, and while his next couple seasons were good, the numbers didn't show much progress being made. At the same time, another young phenom in Mike Trout emerged as the best player in baseball, a fate originally destined for Harper. But as the 2015 season approached, Bryce Harper was going to put up numbers that Trout hasn't reached to this day. And then he was going to make a lot of people angry. Just a couple weeks into the 2015 season, Bryce Harper christened the StatCast era with a mammoth 461-foot blast, the furthest hit ball in Nationals Park that year. It was an omen of things to come. In May, he exploded, crushing 13 home runs. He capped off a streak of six bombs in three games with a May 9th walk-off. Confidence has always been a strength of Harper's, but in May, a level of arrogance emerged. He was ejected from two games within a week of one another, and while some felt the 22-year-old was behaving like an entitled punk kid, Harper himself didn't fully comprehend his own power. On a windy day in Wrigley, a frustrated Harper thought he popped out, but actually went yard. Suffice to say, he led or was near the top of just about every offensive category at the break. Funnily enough, he was still second in the Precious War stat behind, well, you know who it was. Harper's second half represented a commitment to aesthetically pleasing baseball. He was just downright fun to watch. He showed his aggression by hitting well over 300, but also patience as he walked in nearly 20% of plate appearances. The beauty and confidence with which he played were also demonstrated in the field, particularly on this throw to gun down Ryan Braun. It really is unfortunate that the Nationals missed the playoffs that season. Harper and recent free agency signee Max Scherzer were two of the league's top players, but Steven Strasburg and Anthony Rendon both missed significant time due to injury, and the Nats settled for second in the East without a wildcard berth. Of course, that didn't stop Harper from winning MVP, something that his contemporary Trout failed to do that year. Despite his team's struggles, no player contributed to wins like Harper. Not since Barry Bonds had a player OPSed over 1,400 in games won by their team. 1,400. In fact, let's just talk about Bonds real quick. Post Bonds. That's some new vocab for this video. Barry Bonds was such an outlier in the early 2000s that contemporary offensive performances must be contextualized in a post Bonds 2004 world. WRC Plus is a good metric for such an undertaking. It's a slightly more advanced version of OPS Plus, where 100 represents league average. The higher WRC Plus, the better. The scale is the same, but the difference is that WRC Plus is based on WOBA, weighted on base average, and OPS Plus is based on, well, OPS. Bryce Harper's 2015 remains to this day the best post Bonds WRC Plus, beating out incredible seasons from guys like Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, and Mike Trout. To put it much more simply, it's the best single season offensive performance since Barry Bonds walked 232 times. It's for that reason that I must conclude that Bryce Harper's 2015 was, quite frankly, the greatest individual season of the 2010s. Now, that's actually a tricky assertion for a channel that tries to make sabermetric stats more accessible, as the almighty wins above replacement metric disagrees. Harper's 2015 ranks 7th in R War and 8th in F War for the decade. I mean, look, even that bogus Aaron Nola season is ahead of him. Bad R War, bad R War, bad dog. Then there's the problem of Trout, who seemingly puts up a season in this range every year. I could see someone argue in favor of the Mike Trout season where he stole 49 bases, where he had 10.2 F4, where he won unanimous MVP, where he had 190 WRC+, where he hit 45 homers. The crazy thing? Those are five separate seasons. He's that good. 
But for me, it comes down to the offense. Harper excelled at the thing that is easiest to quantify. Defense and base running are harder to measure, especially when the sample size is a single season. So when I look at 2015 Harper's 9.7 war from baseball reference versus 2018 Mookie Betts leading with 10.6, the difference is negligible. I use the wins above replacement metric a lot, but I wouldn't take it at face value when the margins are that slim, whereas it's much easier to argue that Harper had the best offensive season, and that's enough for me. One way to illustrate Harper's dominance of 2015 is to better understand the league's run environment. In just a few seasons since, league-wide slugging has gone up 30 points, and scoring has gone up over half a run per game. And the baseball is perfectly fine, so please stop asking questions about it. So when you look at Harper's final triple slash of batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging, oh, just look at it for a second, the numbers speak for themselves. But you might find yourself saying, yeah, that's great, but is it really that different from Christian Yelich in 2019? And at surface level, the similarities are clear. But if you were to transport Harper to Miller Park in 2019, oh gosh, please ignore the upsetting imagery, he would have hit 350 and slugged nearly 700. The league has changed that much in a short amount of time, which is weird because the baseball is normal and fine. One last terrifying stat. When Bryce Harper was facing a starting pitcher for the third time in a game, he hit Buckle up. 466. He hit 466. That's the best any hitter has managed since Tony Gwynn in 1994. And if you want a season that wasn't strike shortened, you'll have to go back to Rod Carew in 1977. Funny thing about Tony Gwynn and Rod Carew, they didn't hit 42 homers in a season like Bryce Harper did. He played like a 22-year-old neural AI, adapting to opposing pitchers as the game rolled along. Harper was suddenly poised to rival Mike Trout for years to come as the best player in baseball. And you know what happened when he failed to reach those great heights? Baseball fans turned on him. Well, congratulations Bryce Harper, you broke out with one of the most productive age 22 seasons in the history of Major League Baseball, joining Inner Circle Hall of Famers Ted Williams, Ty Cobb, Eddie Collins, and Stan the Man. So, how do you follow it up? Oh, weird. I mean it's not bad, but Harper's 2016 was reminiscent of the numbers he put up as a teenager, not really indicative of any progress. If there's one thing that makes evaluating Harper's true talent level a headache, it's his season-to-season -season variance. Here's his WOBA graph from year to year. It looks like a roller coaster. For Mike Trout, it looks more like walking slightly uphill. Yet there's that pesky 2015 representing the highest peak of them all. Another really impressive showing came in 2017. Harper would have been an MVP conversation that year had he not suffered a violent knee injury in August. Just a few years after Harper put together an undeniably great unanimous MVP season, he had one of the most divisive campaigns of all time. Here's how bad Bryce Harper was in his contract year. He hit 249. Bro, you hit 330 when you were 22. Oh, I'm sorry, batting average doesn't give you the full story? How about wins above replacement, you little poindexter? 1.5 baseball reference war, a result of negative 24 defensive runs saved. This dude was a scrub. Now here's how good he was that year. He led the majors with 130 bases on balls for a wicked 393 on base percentage. If you get on base 40% of the time, you're an elite hitter no matter how you slice it. As for the defense, those metrics can't always be taken at face value. Harper is a plus defender for his career, and those lousy DRS and UZR results from 2018 are simply a result of him preserving his body in a contract year. He still ended up with 3.4 F war regardless. Obviously, the Phillies bought into the latter perspective when they signed him to a then-record-breaking $330 million deal over 13 years. And after a month and a half of inconsistent play, the baseball community began to use that dreaded O word. Let's look at this very website. Inside. Bryce Harper! Yeah, you know where he's going. Overrated, baby. Fielder. Bryce Harper, overrated. Oh, this pains me. This pains me so much. Bryce Harper is the first overrated player on our list. Bryce Harper, 300 plus million dollars. He's hitting 240. I know batting average isn't the most important thing. If you're signing crazy contracts, you better be hitting better than 220. But for right now, Bryce Harper is leading the league in strikeouts. He's walking a whole lot and it's just... <laughs> 
let me just say, these three all make great content and you should definitely subscribe and support them. But notice how the commentary on Harper is driven purely by his contract. 300 plus million dollars! It has created such a target on his back that many baseball fans see this dude as overrated. And that, paradoxically, makes him the most underrated player in baseball. Bryce Harper's underrated. It's a bold claim. But first of all, I'm talking about public perception. I don't care what contract a front office gave him. I care about how baseball fans assess the ever-divisive Bryce Harper. He's totally overpaid, though. After all, the most basic dollars per war math on Fangraphs says teams pay around 8 million bucks per win above replacement on the open market. Harper is earning a little over 25 million a year, but he put up 4.6 F4 last season, meaning he was actually worth, hey, wait a second, the franchise he blessed with that unbelievable 2015 campaign has clearly moved on. Harper was ruthlessly booed upon his return to Nationals Park with the Phillies, but he still delivered on his promise of bringing a title back to DC. How ungrateful can Nats fans get? Then there's Juan Soto, who has seemingly already surpassed Harper and may very well become the best hitter in baseball someday. But it's also possible he does that without touching the outrageous single season outburst of Harper's 2015. Harper was such a monster that year that detractors simply choose to scrub it from the record books completely. Bryce Harper is Jay Bruce with an MVP season, according to a Twitter reply to me. Oop, no free clout. And yeah, there are some similar numbers if you close your eyes and pretend on base percentage doesn't exist. Bam Bam's a stud, no way around it. Among human position players, he's 6th in F4 since 2012, ahead of Votto, Altuve, and Cano. He's been an on-base machine in his much maligned last two seasons, reaching base safely more times than Yelich, Arenado, Rendon, or Bellinger. And he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Maybe not inner circle like Trout, but he's one of seven players with 35 F4, 200 homers, and an MVP award through their age 26 season. For the love of all that is holy, just look at these guys. I know that's a weird combination of qualifiers, but it's a traditional counting stat, plus war, plus an accolade. With those three things, you can appeal to basically every flavor of Hall of Fame voter. So keep holding that season-to-season -season volatility over his head. It'll come back to bite you. That 2015 peak might be a one-off, but 2017 is super doable for him. Think about it. He has 12 more guaranteed years on an MLB roster. The man has nothing but time. It isn't a question of if he's going to break out again. It's simply a question of when. Game over. Hey new patrons, thank you so much for your support. To see your name here, go to patreon.com slash foolishbaseball.